A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Hello everybody, and uh, welcome very briefly, I'm pleased to say, to my office. We'll be going outside in a minute, but first I want to talk about this little camera, or a camera that looks an awful lot like it. About 18 months ago, I got the chance to try a Sony RX100, can't remember the model, there's about seven of them, so I don't know. Uh, but that camera, whatever it was called, was plagued by a lot of the same problems that this little camera is plagued by. This is a, a slightly different model, this is a ZV-1, sort of more of a, a vlogging focused camera, but basically it's got tiny buttons uh, and no ergonomics to speak of. I mean, I have to attach this grip so that I can get a tripod plate somewhere that doesn't interfere with the battery door. And the battery itself is tiny, so you need to change that constantly. Nevertheless, I was very impressed with one particular feature on that RX100, which convinced me to get this, and that was video autofocus. Now this channel is increasingly important to me, and I often film on my own, meaning that I can't be monitoring the camera for autofocus constantly. So having a little camera like this that autofocuses seamlessly uh, is a very valuable tool to me. However, when the sun hasn't risen yet, or when the sun has set, the image quality does leave a little bit to be desired, which actually is to be expected. I mean, it's a tiny little camera. It's probably gonna have a tiny sensor. I mean, it does have a tiny sensor. So um, yeah, you can't really blame it for that. Anyway, that gave me a decision to make and uh, to talk through that decision, we can go outside. And actually we could have done this bit outside as well. Indeed, I did do this bit outside. It's just that while I was talking about really good video autofocus, I was out of focus. I accidentally pressed the button that uh, toggles between manual focus and autofocus on my camera. So, <laughs> that was funny. Also, before we go outside, if you're not the sort of person who cares at all about uh, camera gear, then you can skip to this point in the video where I try and do some, um, some actual photography. Yeah. Uh, right, well, this looks quite nice, actually. So I, I may well end up doing some photography after all with me out of the scene, obviously I sort of ruin it, I think, but uh, very quaint little path going through here. You've got the wall with all the moss and the, the lovely tree. Very nice indeed. Anyway, um, yes, I decided that if I wanted the video autofocus capabilities of this camera, but uh, with better low light performance, I would need probably to buy a better Sony camera, a bigger Sony camera in all likelihood with a bigger sensor. And that's what I did. So I'm filming this currently as you might be able to see, on a Sony A7 III, a camera that I found to be not without its problems. Uh, the one that I've bought has already had to go back twice because the mic input has broken. Um, what else have I found? Uh, the menus took me, no joke, an entire weekend to learn, and uh, I'm sure there was something else too. Oh yeah, the viewfinder resolution is nothing short of hilarious in 2021, but uh, it is quite an old camera, I suppose, so maybe let it off for that. Uh, anyway, by and large, I have actually quite enjoyed using this camera uh, for video stuff. And in fact, I've started using it for stills as well, a little bit. So um, this scene that I'm just about to photograph here, I'll take with this camera. And uh, yeah, I suppose it's, it's roughly what I'd expect from a, a full frame 24 megapixel camera. But the thing is, since I've been using this for the past three or four months, and I've been liking the output from it, it's given me a decision to make. And that decision basically is, do I stick with this setup for video and an entirely different setup for stills, my Lumix setup for stills, or do I try and streamline my gear to just be one system for everything? That's what I've been grappling with for uh, the past, I don't know, two or three months. Lots of research, lots of sleepless nights, lots of thinking, and I have made a decision. And uh, well, this is my new camera, primarily a stills camera, but uh, I say primarily because I'm gonna be using the two interchangeably. And this is a Sony a7R Mark IV, a camera that I thought was absolutely ridiculous when it was released, and I never, ever, ever thought I'd buy it. I remember laughing when they announced 61 megapixels. I thought, who on earth needs that? And uh, well, here I am with the camera myself. Now, it turns out that the 61 megapixels has attracted me for two reasons. Number one, I'm getting lots and lots more inquiries for really, really big prints these days than I ever thought I would. And uh, number two, 
cropping. So this is a 70 to 200 lens, one of the uh, three lenses that I'm gonna go for with my initial setup. But if I shoot at 200 mil on this lens with this camera, I can crop to roughly 300 mil equivalent and still have a file that's 25, 26 megapixels big. So yeah, those two things, printing and cropping, uh, have attracted me to this particular sensor. Now, I am gonna have to make some concessions in my shooting style. Number one, I'm not gonna be able to fire away as uh, I often do because I'll fill up my cards within the space of three or four minutes. And number two, uh, I'm probably, regrettably, gonna have to concede that a tripod will be necessary from time to time because uh, if I want to get the most from a 61 megapixel sensor, uh, I need to make sure that I'm completely still and uh, hand holding is not always conducive to that. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to be a little bit more careful about slow shutter speeds than, than I usually am, which is gonna hurt to be honest, but like I say, with the big prints and stuff, I, I think it's worthwhile. Now, in terms of lenses, we've got the 70 to 200 f4, as I said, uh, and I did consider the f2.8, but it was just too heavy. I mean, it's more than half a kilo heavier than this one, which I thought, oh, I just don't need that. Uh, I also considered the 100 to 400, but again, I just decided it was a bit too heavy, and I decided that I wouldn't need the 200 to 400 focal lengths uh, enough to justify me always having it in my bag because it's my only telephoto. Uh, so yeah, I went with the f4, and the lens that I've been using to record these videos over the past few months is a 16 to 35 f2 a, a lens that I've been super impressed with because it's sharp edge to edge uh, and I'm going to be using that a lot with photography and video going forward. Now the third lens that I've got coming, uh, it hasn't come yet, it's on order, but can you guess what it is? It's, it's quite exotic. I'm very excited about it. Uh, I'll give you a couple of clues by ruling out some options. So the fourth and fifth lenses that I may consider later on are the uh, 20 mil f1.8, just for low light stuff uh, at wide angles, because it's got amazing reviews and it's super light. And the other lens that I may well consider for uh, niche stuff and expeditions, things like that, is the 200 to 600. Um, and I would just take that if I've got ready access to a, a car, for example. I don't imagine I'd be taking a 200 to 600 on many hikes, but uh, that's a lens that I do have my eye on. But the third lens that uh, will hopefully be arriving next week, any guesses? Uh, now, don't get me wrong, I'm under no illusions that I've, I've taken a bit of a punt with this setup change largely because of the 61 megapixels. And I'm gonna be very interested to see how often I think I actually get 61 megapixels of resolution from this sensor. And actually, indeed, whether I think I need that even for massive prints, because I've spoken before on this channel about how printing is all about viewing distances, not necessarily resolution. Uh, but I've made a decision and uh, it'll be interesting to see where it takes me. Uh, so yeah, there we have it. That's my, my new camera setup, which I'm very excited about. Which way am I going? Don't know. So yes, for those of you who are interested, that's, that's kind of what I'm gonna be shooting with going forward and this secret lens that's hopefully turning up next week. And it is very exciting for me. It's also a little bit sad uh, on the basis that I have been a Lumix ambassador for the past four or five years, I think, and I've absolutely loved my time doing that. It's been a fantastic experience and I've loved using Lumix cameras and I still will use Lumix cameras from time to time, mostly because the G9 is still my favorite camera ever, the best camera I've ever owned and used uh, for ergonomics, usability, things like that. So yeah. That is a bit sad, but uh, for video autofocus at the moment, and the way that I use video autofocus, it really makes this current setup a no-brainer for me uh, in terms of time saving and, and things like that. So yes, bittersweet, but uh, excited to, to try out some new stuff, basically. Right, let's try and get some photos with said new stuff, because I'm in a nice place, so why not? Might go back to where I started actually. Get the A7R out there and uh, have a go. Right then, I'm back at the start and uh, I'm gonna go through the path that I've, I've already walked through this morning while filming this video and uh, try and get some photos with the, the A7R. <clears throat> Feel like I've uh, reset a lap on a racing game. <laughs> I've not crashed in any way though, so it's, it's actually not like that at all. Pictures. Oh, here comes the rain, Never mind. Uh, right, step one, we're learning to use this camera, is uh, trying to work out what my realistic minimum shutter speed is to get good results with 61 megapixels. Uh, I'm gonna start off with a minimum shutter speed of 30th of a second. Uh, I've set up the, uh, the bin button to uh, bring up minimum shutter speed. Don't know if you can see that. But yeah, I'm gonna start off at 30th of a second. 
and see what results I get with that on a relatively windless day uh, with the 16 to 35. Obviously, I'm not going to try a 30th of a second with a telephoto lens, or I'd be surprised if I got sharp results with that. But the wide angle, I'm hopeful. 28 millimeters, f8, 30th of a second, ISO 125. Bit of a mess that scene, to be honest, but this is just a scout. That's what I always say when I'm not convinced I'm going to get a great shot. And it is also just a scout. I've never been here before, so. Very, very nice though. Just going off the path for a second. I mean, like I said last week, I am most drawn to human elements in scenes, but uh, it's always worth having a look. I suspect a, a proper experienced woodland photographer would have a field day in here. I am not that. Mm. Try it, 60th of a second. Not massively sold on that as a photo, but uh, as a test shot, probably works well. Oh yes, love this. The, uh, the tree just forming an arch over the path. Again, the path could be a bit more defined, but uh, I think it's fine as it is. Human element perfection. That's what that is. Nice little footpath sign. Beautiful. Uh, right, well, as you can see, I'm back on the road, which is a relief, actually, because uh, even though, as you can probably hear, there's a river down there and I was following it, I managed to get lost, which I always thought was impossible to do, but I managed it. Anyway, thank you for watching me and my new camera prancing around in the woods. More of the same next week. Uh, not necessarily in the woods and hopefully with my new lens which is due to turn up this week but these things always get delayed so you never know. Anyway thanks for watching and a big thank you to the sponsor of this week's video as well Squarespace. So Squarespace as many of you I'm sure know by now uh, is the platform that I use for my online portfolio in other words my website uh, my online store where I sell my books my prints my presets and the newsletters that I use to promote those things as well as workshops Squarespace takes care of those too and actually they take care of all the analytics that encompasses that stuff so that I can very easily and simply check the progress on all those things as well it's a fantastic service and I would highly recommend it if uh, perhaps you're a photographer as well and you want somewhere online to showcase your online portfolio or perhaps you'd like somewhere to sell your own prints definitely check it out basically is all I've got to say and you can do so by going to squarespace.com to start your free trial and after that if you'd like to make a purchase, then go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off that first purchase. And uh, yes, I've used Squarespace for years. I absolutely love it. I'm 70% sure the car's down this way. But given that I've just got lost in somewhere that's very difficult to get lost, I should probably check the map. I mean, I'm on the road, but I could be going in the completely wrong direction. I'll see you next week.